Chris Roney from at and Hi, Chris. Hi, Dan. So you talked about uh, heterogeneous networks this morning as a kind of a cornerstone of uh, at and t strategy going forward, which includes like Wi-Fi, small cells, the macro network. Can you explain some of the earliest applications that will stitch some of these together? So, Dan, for years we've been doing cell splitting on what I call a vertical basis, where we cell split our macro network. So I think of the small cell strategy is also splitting that from a horizontal vantage point. So putting smaller cell sites in that cover a smaller area, they're less uh, obstructive in terms of they're easier to get through zoning processes, et cetera, serve a small geographic area. So that is a first piece of our head net in terms of introducing that. And then also using our unlicensed spectrum or our Wi-Fi solutions that we also own and operate to also do that on a smarter application basis in terms of some, some applications work very well over Wi-Fi and those others, as we introduce QoS into the network, we would want to keep on that macro network, including the small cell strategy. So bringing together all of those different solutions on a single solution for our customers. Right, and the, the broad general goal is coverage as wide as possible. Right. Are there other services that you can possibly kind of bring together with this, with this kind of quilting of the network? We would look at it primarily in terms of both our voice and our packet data services, increasing the capacity, also improving the, the quality of service um, and lower latency in that regard. So being able to leverage that where if the customer is highly mobile, we would assign them to the macro network. If they're more stationary or portable, then they would be more on the, the micro network, if you will. And, and then being able to have the intelligence in the network in knowing what kind of transaction that is and how best to assign it. at and is already running one of the largest kind of 3G small cell networks in the world, as far as I understand it, and also kind of Wi-Fi, carrier Wi-Fi networks. When does uh, LTE in a kind of small cell factor start to play into that? So we, we view adding LTE to those existing UMTS, HSPA, small cells. We also utilize a tool for self-optimizing network that's primarily on our UMTS, HSPA network today. And we'll be expanding that to LTE as well in terms of being able to do the automatic reconfiguration when you have congestion or a high activity in one cell site to try to spread that across those surrounding cell sites or that underlying micro network. Um, and so being able to introduce those kinds of capabilities as well. Okay, we actually just uh, did a speed test with root metrics around kind of uh, 3G and 4G and uh, ATT scored very highly, I think uh, with a 20.4 megabits download in uh, Indianapolis uh, as kind of the top score. As I understand it, small cells will be one thing that pushes those speeds even higher, but as a kind of depth of coverage measure, are we going to see them kind of in a, in just in urban areas or will, it, will there be other applications? We believe our LTE design in terms of the way we designed our network by in most situations, we put the electronics, the remote radio head at the top of the tower, putting it closer to the customer. And then our very broad implementation of the Ethernet backhaul, where more than 90% of our wireless data traffic is handled on Ethernet today. So we think that's helping us to deliver those very high throughput speeds. Yeah. The, the small cell strategy then will enable you to expand that capacity. So the peak speeds may not be substantially higher, but more users in that geographic mm -hmm. area would be able to enjoy the advantages of those peak speeds. Right, so you don't get clobbered by millions of people downloading video. It at the is same a shared time. network. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you so All much right. for your time. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate it. Thank you.